Um, all right. Well, uh, I'll call this meeting to order then. Um, this is a meeting of the Rules Committee of the Representative Town Meeting. And uh, it's a regularly scheduled meeting. Um, first item uh, is approving the minutes for January 10, 2002. Do I have a motion, please? Somebody. There, Teresa, I got you. A second. I'll second. Oh, thank you. All right, any uh, corrections, uh, additions, thoughts? Okay, ready to uh, vote? All right, uh, are there any uh, no votes? I don't see any. Uh, any abstentions? <clears throat> Lois didn't abstain. Okay. Great. Uh, the item uh, passes. Uh, next is assigning RTM members to committees. Uh, District 1, Jeff Krause. Uh, on behalf of uh, District 1, there, oh, look at this. A work of art. Um, first I need, Patty, I hope it's okay if I just do it. And there's there's Pat. Oh, Patty's, Patty's rocking. Okay, Patty. We're just we're uh, assigning Jeff to Public Works. Yes. Okay. Sorry. No, it's not Public Health and Safety, Mike. It's Public Works. Okay, and that was the number, what, one pick or? We had two left. We had Public Works and TGSNA. There is a lot of uh, work to be done on both committees, but because of all the work coming down, including ARPA, uh, potential a lot of ARPA funds potentially coming from Public Works, we felt that that might need um, some immediate attention. So after a long discussion, Lois and I agreed that that was the committee to make sense to put him on, and that was his first request as well. Oh, great. All right, that sounds great. Um, I'll take, I'll do both of these first and then we'll just move to get it to move one. Uh, so uh, for District 5, Ian Laird. Is that Ann gonna? You may be muted, Ann. I think Anne is doing the meeting from her car. So, uh, we, Mark, can you do it? Yeah. Uh, I can. I'm not sure which one. Ian Laird. Ian Laird. Yeah, he was looking for planning and zoning. His first choice, public health and safety. Second choice, public works. Third choice. Um, I don't know if we did agreed as to where he would be placed. <clears throat> Could we vote on him later in the yeah, meeting? Yeah. When Ann can yeah. talk? Okay. Maybe Ann can text in some comments also. Yeah, I see she's on mobile. Okay, uh, so we'll come back to that. Uh, can I have a, a motion then uh, to assign Jeff Krause to uh, Public Works? And uh, second, please. Thank you, Joe. Um, oh, hang on, Seth. Who made the motion? I didn't hear anything. Uh, Lois. Lois, I'm sorry. I've, I've got to Lois had her hand up. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Got it. Thank you. And who was the second? Joe. Uh, Thank you. Michelli. Joe, Joe Michelli. All right. Um, we ready to vote. Uh, are there any uh, no votes? I don't see any abstentions. I don't see any. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Um, next item is uh, 
town employees contract uh, assigning uh, committee to that. Can I interrupt? And, and yes. when we get our schedule, when you get down the list where it's appropriate, could we do the part that John and Susan are here for? So we don't wait too um, long. We we could, put that in, but that's yes, just a yes. I would actually, with with everyone's permission, move it up to now. Um, Thank you. Uh, Lois and I discovered after some discussion that yes, Mark. Would you happen to have the agenda in a Word version? It was distributed in, in PDF this time, and I'm having to create everything from scratch here. Oh, Let's... sorry. Sure, I'll send it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that this is one meeting. I don't think you want to do that. No, I just looked at the yes. The length of it is. Uh, thank you. Right. Give me a moment like to pull I... it down. Okay. Going to Outlook, one second. Thank you, sir. I'm at a lot of darianct.gov. I actually think I have your... Uh... It's probably in there. You probably have several old ones, too. Yeah, I'll check. The, let's see what it says. There it is. Subject. Uh, no subject. You don't need a subject. Rules. Insert file. Mark, I just texted it to you also. I took a photograph and texted it if that's helpful. Mm. No, I need it. I'm looking for it in Word. Thank you, though, Patty. I'm trying to avoid typing that whole thing over. Mark, going forward, I'll make sure I can just send you one in Word also. Thank you. Thank you. You now have more copies than you dreamed. <laughs> Got it, Seth. Thank you. Sorry for the okay. delay. All right. So, um, you good to go, Mark? Good to go, sir. Okay. Uh, so, the next item on the agenda is the uh, town employees contract, assigning committees to that. I, I there's a there are different. <laughs> elements within the town that come under the contract, but essentially it's a document for the employees. Uh, I thought it was just probably F and B. Uh, Jack, you got? Yeah, I've already spoken with Matt. Um, it is primarily F and B, and because there's nine civilian dispatch, um, Matt will also take a look at it. Spoke to Kate today. The Board of Finance is reviewing it tomorrow. Um, after they get it reviewed, I'm going to get the typical details we would uh, get um, on the contract, including potentially a draft of the contract, with the understanding that what is there is still confidential at this time. But as soon as I get it from Kate, I'll pass it on to Mac. Um, I also just uh, notified Amy knowing that there are a couple of um, um, P&Z employees there. Um, but for the most part, if you go into town hall, most of the people covered are off to the left. Um, so it's town clerk, it's the people working at ta tax assessor, tax collector, and up in the um, selectman's office. So, um, but anyway, I gave uh, Amy an option if she wanted to look at it. And if so, I'll pass it to her as well. But right now, um, us primary, Mac secondary. Okay. Um, so what we'll do is uh, assign these, uh, and then, uh, well, there's a lot of them. We'll, I'll take them one at a time. Uh, can I have a motion for to assign the town employees contract finance and budget primary? Uh, secondary is uh, public public health and safety. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second, I see Peter. Uh, ready to vote. Are there any no votes? Okay. Any abstentions? I don't see any. 
Motion passes unanimously. Next is the uh, Seth, you were, Seth, you were going to move to the registrars so they could. Oh, yes. Excuse, excuse me. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so I didn't. Uh, well, there were there's there's one uh, there. I guess there's there's one item uh, that I need to add to the agenda, and that is uh, just approving us to go to uh, Kate Bush to get ARPA funds for uh, doing uh, the uh, um, being able to conduct hybrid me meetings. Uh, we need we need some technology, and it's going to cost some money to do it. And uh, Lois uh, will report on it. But if I could have your permission, without objection, I'll add that as a topic on the agenda. Are there any objections? Um, Jeff? Yeah, Jack. On, on the same motion, why don't we add that to the agenda and change the agenda to deal with the um, district in the same motion? so okay. that we can move John and Susan up and they can leave their uh, wonderful offices and go home. That's a, that's there a great we go. idea. I'll, I'll great idea. I, I see a, a motion from Jack and a second from Frank. Is that is that good? All right. Uh, um, <laughs> I, um, I don't, are there any? Yes, Mark. Could, could you repeat that motion as you heard it, Seth? I, yeah. Um, we're doing two things. We're adding, um, we're moving on the agenda, the um, discussion on the redistricting up because we have uh, our uh, uh, folks uh, from town hall here tonight. And we'll, so we'll make it easier to uh, for them uh, to, to take it up immediately. Um, our, our two registrars and our distinguished town clerk. Hi, Krista. And then uh, the second part of the motion uh, is is to allow us to to uh, add um, support for uh, asking for ARPA funds for uh, the, uh, the the we're gonna we're petitioning to get some uh, technology so we can run hybrid meetings. And Understood. That it's going to take some money to do it. So those are the two pieces. Thank you. All right. Uh, so uh, we're ready to vote. Uh, are there any no votes? I don't see any. Any abstentions? I don't see any. Motion passes unanimously. Great. So uh, let's do redistricting. Uh, Frank, can we start there? Very good. First, I'd like to uh, thank. Uh, uh, Susan and John and Krista for stopping by this evening as they have worked on this resolution over the last couple of weeks. You may recall that um, the uh, state uh, redesigned the House and Senate boundaries back in the fall and, and voted on it and the governor signed it in November. So uh, when the news came out as to how that redistricting was going to affect us, uh, it caused some uh, Cause some some high quality thinking and planning to take place. Um, the uh, Susan and John briefed TGSNA uh, back in mid January on the situation. Uh, the solution was not on the table at that time, but since that briefing, um, the thing has come into focus, and we have a proposal. Uh, Mike, can I get the screen uh, to put up an exhibit? Yeah, go ahead. You just ha just have to press the the um, screen button that has a line across it. Yes, it is. It's gray. I'm clicking on it right now. It's gray. Well, uh, oh, you checked out. You 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 when you when you and I had our rehearsal, you left the meeting and came back. So I'm sorry. I forgot to make you a presenter again. You're, okay. You are you are all set now. Very good. Okay. My fault. Well, we'll see in a moment. Okay, you uh, you should see uh, the cover page of a little briefing package that went out last night, uh, and then uh, was redistributed today. So it has a couple items on it. Uh, the lead-off item is a draft copy uh, of the resolution uh, to make some adjustments in our uh, RTM uh, 
uh, district boundaries as a result of the state changes. Um, uh, that proposal uh, uh, drafted by Wayne uh, is accompanied by a very good two-page memo of uh, background information about how we got into such <laughs> how we got into such a mess and their suggestions for getting out of it. Uh, let's take a moment and describe the mess. Um, the new house districts uh, shown on this uh, map uh, so that most of Darien is uh, now in um, House District 141, shown in green, and that uh, District 125, which is primarily New Canaan and up county, uh, took a big slice out of Darien in our District 1. Uh, that alone uh, wouldn't have been too bad to cope with, but at the same time, the new Senate districts were announced, and this is really quite something. Uh, south of the Turnpike, um, we have, uh, as shown in gray here, uh, is uh, District 27, which is Stamford and our, and our Districts 4 and 2. Uh, in the middle, in purple, is a district that is primarily Norwalk, which reaches out and takes the center of our uh, of, of Darien out. And then um, this problematic district, uh, which is District 26, starts off in Westport, goes up to Wilton and Weston, uh, zooms around by the southern part of New Canaan. It's not, it's, uh, downtown New Canaan is not included in this. This is the the uh, residential area south of south of the center of, Dar of, of New Canaan and cuts across our district one and uh, winds up over in Stamford. By the way, if you look at the charts that uh, that Dover Stamford has just the same problems that we do uh, and, and maybe uh, even worse. Um, if you take the House and the Senate boundaries and put them on a chart, you wind up uh, uh, with something that looks like this. Every possible cost combination that would, that could cause a problem. For example, in the southern part of District 1, Senate 25, House 141. Well, fine, up, up here you have Senate 25 in this other district, Senate 25, but it's House 125. No match. And you move up to the very northern part, and you have 26 and 125. And then over to the left or the northwest corner, you have 26 and 141. It is no wonder that the registrar's voters uh, were somewhat perplexed as to how to administer this and just how to work their way out of this problem. Uh, if you look at, uh, I realize this is hard to read, but basically this is a list of our seven districts because we have a little district called 4.1, and uh, there are very few voters in it. There are 173 registered voters. They voted Hindley with District 4, but the, anybody who's running the election over, just moderating the election over District 4, uh, realizes that they got two books, one with 2,000 names in it, and one with just uh, a short of 200. And, and that is because, uh, I hope you can see the cursor flying back and forth, that the Senate districts are different. And this was a very good way of coping with that for the short term. Well, what happened now is up top here, instead of District 1, we have 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1.4, there are Northwest, Northeast. And as you can tell from the hodgepodge diagram over here, uh, it's the worst possible combination. Each, each one of them has a different House Senate combination. So, in working a way out of this problem, uh, it may be reasonable to take little District 4.1, which shares the same profile as our District 5. You see it's a 25 and 141, 25 and 141, um, and absorb the little, the little precinct of four, have it absorbed into five, won't make that much of a bubble, just 173 registered voters moving over. Then up in uh, the problem in District 1, you'll see that the, of the four districts, the one in the upper left-hand corner is Senate 26, 
House 141. Well, that's the same as our District 3. That's great. Um, if uh, we approve that that district will, could be merged into three, and then when we look at the numbers down here, the numbers remain just about the same. Here's our list of uh, districts as they are right now with 4.01 and 173. Well, if you were to take 173 out of 4.1 and add them into five, that'd be a modest, uh, modest increase. Similarly, up in District 1, that little district over in the left-hand corner is 118. Pull that out and add it into three, and then you have this revised number. This number of 15,072 is as of January 1st uh, this year. Uh, Red Star voters pull reports every month um, based on the puts and takes of people who register or people who leave uh, or move from one district to the other. So that's a number that will change or from month to month. So it's very important to Krista at the time that we uh, determine uh, how many seats each district has in the RTM. Right now it's 16s and 17s. You could anticipate some change when that number has to be uh, uh, reviewed in September in advance of the uh, November election. The procedure that she follows is well spelled out in our Appendix B to our uh, uh, to our uh, charter. So here, it, uh, so here it, again is the uh, recap: taking 4.01, bring it up into five bring one of the districts in one over into three. And as a result of that, instead of having 10 books to run, the, the, the registrar of voters have seven books to run right now, our six plus the little four. So it's, that, would have, that would have increased to 10. And then uh, if by this move, uh, they all have eight, which is an increase, but it uh, brings it back into some sort of, uh, rational approach to the whole thing uh, uh, rather than uh, rather than what we were faced with a couple of months ago. So as a result of this, um, the little summary that came out um, at, uh, uh, of this for, for present uh, presentation to the RTM uh, or re or reads, a special meeting was had by TGS and I. Uh, we had six of 10 members, which we had a quorum. Uh, we had reviewed the situation with the Registrar of Voters in mid-January. And subsequent to that, the solution uh, seemed to be present itself to say, make good sense. So what this says, after discussion of the Registrars and Voters presentation and the draft resolution, the committee voted unanimously to recommend to the Rules Committee to enter this resolution on the agenda of February 28th meeting of the RTM and recommended that the RTM approve the resolution at that time, respectfully submitted chairman of TGSNI. Nice so there we are, folks, open, open for questions. And I'm sure John, and now those questions, please direct them to John and Susan. <laughs> Well, uh, first of all, Frank, nice job. Nice job, uh, Kate and our registrars. Thank you. Uh, we sort of, we, we, this is one of these things where we were proactive and had TGSNA get engaged right from the very beginning here so that well, as we were coming to talk about putting this on the agenda of the RTM, that the Rules Committee would have uh, an understanding of what this was all about. Um, so uh, are there... Any uh, questions or comments? Yes, Pat. Uh, so <laughs> I'm in District 1, and um, I stopped by the voters' district uh, office a while ago, as I brought up at the last rules meeting. And, you know, we were going to get more information. And I appreciate all the hard work. But, I mean, I guess this email came at 1030 and I was driving all day. So I was able to get home, print it out and look at it now. So not for nothing, I don't feel like it gave me time to really understand and review this. So I still don't have a clear understanding of this. 
Um, I understand from talking to Krista and from the folks at the Register of Voters, it's crazy to have four different voting things within District 1. Um, so just bear with me because um, I'm a little tired from the drive, but I don't understand when you're talking about for District 1, you know, the changes. 2641, we go down 118. Is that 118 households we're going down? Is that 118 voters? and it's revised to 2523. Can you just reiterate that for registered voters? So we would lose 118 registered voters in District 1. It's not, that's not yeah. actually, I'm sorry, Patty, that's not, the numbers were revised, John, I believe they're 182 now. What do you have on your sheet? Okay, actually, there. Patty, that's a, a guesstimate, as we, as Frank mentioned, it's a ballpark. People okay. will move in and out of the district, but as of January, that was the number okay. of electors, correct? We're always speaking about electors in this case. Okay. When you say we're always thinking about electors, are you talking about RTM representatives from District 1? What do you mean? Can you define that? No, we're not talking about population. We're talking about electors. No, I know when you're saying electors, for example, just trying to get a better understanding of, let's say we have, uh, what do we have, 15, 16 in District 1, Lois? So um, w w do we know that's going to drop us down one? And I see the part about nobody's going to have to uh, do anything in the next year in terms of getting at least 25 um you know, write-ins or something like that, but then after that. So, I mean, I'm just asking all the fair questions because our district is the one that seemed to be the most uh, sabotage. It has nothing to do with our wonderful po folks at the Register of Voters, with you, with uh, any of us. This happened up, you know, up in Hartford. But None I'm of just, this is personal. <laughs> no, no, I know, but I'm trying to get a better, better understanding. So when our district reps in RTM start to hear this, I have... I have a clearer way to answer them. So I think I think um Krista that the next step I think is to allocate RTM members across the population by district. So maybe if you do that next step and have that ready also for what we're looking at, that might be helpful. I think that's what Patty was going after. Um I'm happy to prepare that information, though it won't here you can get a sense for the distribution as it would be January, though the ballot will not be set until September. So I am happy to provide information, but it could be very different in November. I'm sorry, September. Because of people moving? Patty, Patty okay. if, it's, if it's any help, I popped this uh, chart up on the screen, which may be some help of uh, the situation of, of how many uh, how many people, how many registered, by the way, we, I, I made the I same mistake. I have the printout that I was able to okay. print out. Right so this, this will, I would have loved all of this information a while ago, just so I could yeah, process this, it, ask you all these questions probably prior to the meeting, and then we could have moved forward, but go ahead. Yeah, well, anyway, this will help you see whether there's 16 or 17 no, uh, representatives. That. I'm very uh, clear. You know what I'm saying, though. I just so in September we'll know based on any changes in housing situation, sales, et cetera, like that. And then going forward, basically, it's more of a year from now or the secondary year if we decrease. After that, it'd be 2023, where there could be a change in the number of uh, district reps for our district. That's all. Correct, Krista? Um. These changes would come into effect for the November 22nd election. Okay. All right. So this November. Good, uh, if I might. Okay. Uh, any, uh, Mike, did you have? Uh, what What districts are uh, Corbin Drive and uh, Federated and uh, Palmer's development's going to go into, uh, but Federated's going to supposedly have people living there in this summer. That's would question. Number, number. Excellent question. Federated is district should be that's over below us, right, Mark Adeletta? 
Uh, yes. So District 5, part of it will be District 5, and then part of it could be, no, I think it will definitely be District 5. I don't know where Palmer's, Palmer's was District 5 when I was there with you guys. Uh, and then sometimes some of that comes over across the highway from the folks wherever like Walmsley and those areas are just across 95. John sometimes. has a lot of that information from um, Jeremy Ginsburg. Yeah, every, everything we did when we looked at the numbers, we went up to planning and zoning and they gave us the districts with the growth. They gave us, you know, projections and Susan and I based it on, you know, planning and zoning information. And then you may have to consider uh, the Selleck Woods development, depending on which way that gets um, voted as well. Yeah, that's in <laughs> District 6, I believe. Oh, and what and what's Corbin Drive going to be in too? Yeah, I believe that's in five. Cor Corbin Drive would it wouldn't be in five. Corbin Drive would be five. It would be two, close probably two. It's also close to six. Yeah, I would think it would be two. I wouldn't think it's. Um, if if I might, this is a conversation that I had with Frank earlier. The way the town orchestrates our districts is based upon registered voters. The way the state organizes their districts is based upon population. And where I came across this was, is that Billy Miller, when she was running for um, the state legislator, had 5,000 um, registered voters. And yet, um, Dennis Mahoney, who was running against William Tong, um, had 10,000 registered voters in their district. Populations were the same, registered voters were different. So at least, and, and, and Patty, I understand because you, your district is really the one that has the most impact to it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, having been redistricted before, any RTM member, I was at one time in District 5 as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, but any existing RTM member who is currently serving in District 1, even if they are now in District 3, continues to serve in District 1 until their term has expired, and then they would re up into District 3 if there was an RTM member in there. And it's my understanding that there might be one current RTM member who is in that little carve out, the 181, um, that will continue, they're not up this year, so they would continue in District 1, and then in 2023, should they choose to run again, would be running in District 3. That is correct. Uh, it, it's really more just uh, managing the message, uh, getting enough information so when we're asked questions, it's managing the message. You know, I don't want it to become a uh, a third rail issue for people when it doesn't. As you said, Jack, we were both. You know, I was we I was in right. District Five with my yeah, no. uh, district. The, um, when we first saw that it was going to be four, when I first went into the uh, talk to um krista and talked to the wonderful folks at the rotor voters registration office and they we were getting you know divided up in four different areas i had a big concern about how many that was representing 118 doesn't sound that much 182 is higher and then who knows more people might move in because oxridge is being built and so be that as it may i was just trying to get a a better handle on the number so thank you okay so are we can i make a suggestion because i think patty raises a good point i think that the documents frank put together are, are very good very informative yeah but I think we need an executive summary on how to better explain this so they they have some understanding at the RTM and this isn't a I mean just here in rules where we're just supposed to assign things to a certain extent we've spent significant time on this so I think yeah, a executive summary. I think that's a really good point otherwise the RTM will be crazy 
Right. We'll be on it for two hours and it won't change the outcome. Yeah. 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 Thank, excellent job, Frank. Excellent uh, Jack, job. Jack and yeah. Jack and Patty. Um, I would draw your attention to it, part of this package. I skipped over it very quick, but it's like it's the one, two, third page down is a two page briefing memo, which is intended as just that executive summary, which which covers the background. Uh, it's very nicely done. Uh, and so, uh, yes, for our, if we decide to put this on the RTM agenda for two weeks from now, then we have to figure out what sort of package we'd like to send out. I suggest that we look, we start with this memo that they have prepared, which covers the nuts and bolts of it. Um, and anyway, and my, and apologies, I, I know that you did not, it did not come into your hands until last night. But so again, the, the, um, the part, that that pack, that, that, I think we're there. I, th uh, I, I think we have briefing material for the RTM if they choose to read it. Right. Sometimes, uh, let me say this delicately. This is all great, but I agree with almost a softer kind of overview where it almost. And I don't know if you know. I don't know if because TGSNA is so kind of technical in the way you have to give stuff out. But I almost feel like if there's a little historical analysis in the past, we, you know, X number of years ago, we were redistrict, District 5 moved here, you know, one or, one or two people moved, uh, I guess, uh, soften the context. Some context. Yeah. I think context. Right. In historical context, it's not the end of the world. It's not affecting everybody. Not every, <laughs> nobody's going to lose their, you know, spot. You'll likely, maybe, you might be one person who gets moved over. Maybe not, right? Depending on. So, just kind of a, a soft marketing piece, so to speak. That that's the word that I thought was it's missing. Uncommon. It's that this is great technical information, but assuming that people may only read the marketing piece. It needs a little bit of marketing, just um, as I like to say, sometimes we need to spin things a little bit better. And so it needs the spin. And I agree, uh, quite honestly, in the last redistricting, when we created District 3, we actually ended up with something like 12 RTM members for seven spots. This is not the case this time. No, no. As a matter of fact, we uh, picked up a new representative. Um, the uh, what I would say to you is that um, it's possible to have folks inter interface with Frank and exchange to tune a you know the overview or, uh, but um, I think we found um, a way to be able to proceed here uh, that that is the least disruptive of, of a number of different options. Oh, I'm sorry, I got talking there. Susan, you had a question. Yes, I, I want to know what, Patty in particular, what, um, so you are interested in some information about how this redistricting will affect RTM membership in, in the district, is that correct? Correct, if you remember when I was in there back in, right. you know, and I stopped in and, um, You know, some people, people, you know, they worked hard to be elected and they would like their neighbors to be voting on them. And sometimes these lines that are drawn are, are, are odd and it's somebody way up in the North Country that they're not even nearby, you know. And so, for example, I use my example. I was cut off. I'm on Hanson Road. I was cut off to like the street right behind me on the high school. So Mark is basically on the opposite side of the high school. I'm on this side and you know, now we wave to each other, but we're not in the same district. Right. And so a little bit is the, getting the people's, you know, people's getting getting their head around um we did have that in this um in this summary so in the um in in district one it, we're not talking about a lot of changes there would be one or two um shifts from district one there would possibly be a loss of two rtm members and i but that's think that's a lot that's a lot that's a lot it's a Two in one district is a lot. 
Yeah. These are long standing members. I talked to Chris and John about this. I mean, I knew what I was going to ask this question. I just knew it. My so, friends, uh, excuse yeah, me, everybody. Excuse me. We, I think what we're looking at here is uh, deciding on putting this on the agenda. Uh, first of all, assigning committees, which we have not, I, we didn't formally assign a committee, I don't think, on this. I know um, I, I called up Frank and said, Frank, get a hold of everybody and start working on this. But uh, would be, uh, I'm guessing it would be TGSNA primary and F and B. What do you think? Is there enough here, Jack, for for F and B uh, as far as numbers are concerned? Or no. Uh, <laughs> if I can, if if I um, might. Uh, Seth, uh, it'd uh, be a pleasure to be the primary on it, uh, but I will note that the TGSNA has voted unanimously uh, to support this. And okay. so unless there is yeah. some new information about new statistics or a new revision of state line or the Repo or Red Shore voters preparing a new proposal, uh, there's uh, the, the TGSNA will make the same report as I just made to you tonight that we voted unanimously for it. Now, if you would like me to write a summary, then I, I, I go offline and find out what it is that you'd like to include in the summary. I, I don't want to do that on live right now. Right. But I'm, I'm perfectly capable of writing uh, <laughs> a, another explanation. The, what, I said the there are helpers other. in the audience as well. Yeah, if, if I might, Seth, yes, you asked yeah. a question. So let me give you F&B's response. $3,000 has already been spent, so I don't like approving things that have already been done. $1,500 is yet to be spent. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're on degender. That's, that's degender. We're talking oh, about okay. this. Well, on this, one, on this one, I don't see any role for F&B on this from a financial perspective. OK. Can I, can I say one thing, Seth? So we have to, so, we have so to this is a, a, an interesting you know interesting situation. It goes to the heart of the rules committee, and I would I would think that TGSA has done their work with the registrar of voters and town clerk, and has a resolution that has been prepared by town council. Now, either we put it if we put it on the agenda, who's going to stand behind it? Now, or answer the questions or prepare the background memo that uh, another background memo. I suggest maybe it's the rules committee that does it because the rules committee is concerned about the allocation of seats within the 100, um, 100 members of RTM, not one committee, not just TGSNA. So if there's going to be some recap or some master plan or master explanation, it really is a responsible, uh, my view is it's the responsibility of rules. Well, I would say thank you for all your hard work, Frank, as always, because it's tremendous. And I'd be happy to just, uh, maybe Jack will say, maybe we can just shoot you, um, as you said, you'd be happy to do like a light one page addition to it. You know, the right. quicker, I'll, easier. Talk, I'll talk with you later tonight or tomorrow, right. and I'll get your suggestions of what, uh, Patty, right. I'll, I'll get I'm your suggestions of what ought to be there, and also anybody else who would like to help me explain to the RTM the facts that we have. Frank, yes. I, I do want to say something. Yes, yeah, Jack. Uh, I don't think you, sh I, I don't want you to be defensive. Everybody here recognizes that without your leadership, what ended up being this resolution might not have happened. And that's based upon yours and my prior conversations. So we all recognize that. However, we're now dealing with 10 very, or whatever, how many people are here, very diligent people. And my concern is that um, not everyone is going to be, be reading the document that you have put together. And so they may need a, um, what was that? book that you used to read it um and if you didn't want to read the book primer cliff notes yeah, version primer, just to just let some people understand cliff, nothing to worry notes. about there's a solution here's the solution here's the two districts that are um affected 
everybody else is basically the same. I mean, that's basically it. And and maybe one other thing, I, yeah. I would like to socialize this question and see what you guys think. Because uh, when I say a hot rail, third rail issue, I'll, you know, in the past, sometimes when you say the phrase redistricting, school age parents get nervous that it's going to affect where they go to school. So we include a line that says nothing to do with uh, redistricting schools. I don't know what you guys think about that, but I bet out of the 100 people on the RTM, especially the new people, someone might ask that. I don't know if that muddies the water, but I'm just throwing it out, or we should be prepared to answer that with a simple no in the meeting. So Frank, um first the, of, uh, uh, the uh, alternative yeah. alternative is if, if if either we don't put it on the agenda or if we put it on the agenda and the rtm votes it down what are the consequences well it's that uh, uh, susan and john uh are back in the kettle of soup that they were when this happened and they'll have to run four districts up in district one and that'll be it that that that's the only consequence um, I don't think this is going to be voted down. I think yes, it's I, just I say something, an expedite getting it through so we're not spending an hour on it because we already have a very long agenda with a bunch of other things and some of those might be equally controversial to this, which I think is really a very good solution to a, a very, very complicated yeah. problem. Yeah. All right. Well, then, to bring this uh, to bring this to a head, I would like to move that the rules committee place this topic on the RTM's agenda for uh, the uh, February twenty second twenty uh, eighth meeting. Okay. Do I have a second? second? Also, Jack Davis, a second. Do I have? Um, okay. Um, for um, the, I, I'd like to amend the the motion to say TGSNA is the com the primary and primary. only committee to report yeah yes yeah, so we have yeah yeah indeed i'll just uh, we have served as the primary on this there's no um merit in calling another tgsna meeting to review it but at the time of the presentation at the rtm meeting i'm pleased to do that probably a shorter ver and I'll, I'll take your all good advice should it be a shorter presentation or a more lengthy presentation on the night of the rtm nonetheless TV, TGS Naval Service is primary, although you, you, our report is on the table right now. Well, we, right. So the motion is right, on. Have, we have to formally appoint you, and I think I'm never sure that, that actually we actually did that because uh, I did it on a phone call to you saying, hey, we've got to get onto this now, and you went ahead and, and, and got going on it, which is good. That's, uh, that's a good thing. Hence why I just made the motion to have TGS and A primary, Seth. Right. Um, it looked like Lois seconded it. So no, can I, we vote I, on it? No, no. Lois, no. Lois, I, 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 I have a, I have a, I have a motion from Frank and a second from Jack. Oh, wait, I did it. That's what I have too. Uh, no, I have questions. Okay. Lois, question. Well, I'm, I'm concerned that the agenda, you know, it, it doesn't sound like it has to be voted in February. That it could be voted in March. And I just, and I don't not, that's not saying, Frank, that you have to do tons more work than, than whatever has to be done. But if it's going to be controversial and it's going to be something that people are going to need to discuss, I think we need to weigh it for what's on the agenda for each of those two sessions. And I have no view of what's on in March and, um, or how long the other conversations will take for February. But I just raised that as an issue for deciding on which, it is clearly ready for deciding on which uh, meeting it should be part of. We, we have a statutory deadline. Ah. We, we have a statutory deadline. We have to let thousands of voters know in March, in the beginning well, of March. The question then, it has to go on in February. Thank for, you. For the delegates for Republican and Democratic state conventions are set, we, we, ha we have to notify all of our voters whether, of all the changes in all the districts. That's why we're here tonight. Okay, Thanks, I uh, Susan, I got it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah, you. Mark? Jack, I, I, I can appreciate that there may be some confusion or consternation when they hear when uh, 
members here redistricting, would it make sense to have representatives from the uh, to the from the two affected districts, whether that be from rules or from the district chair, speak to some of the background, specifically coming from the perspective of those two affected districts? It doesn't have to be long, but it's it's part it's it would be individuals that have an interest in those two districts, giving the background yeah. story, if you will, as opposed to putting it on um, the chair of TGSNA who did the the, the data research and you know, the bulk of the presentation. Mark, I, I, I think that's an excellent idea where um, I would still have TGSNA do the report right. and then have um, the two districts that are affected, I believe it's four and one because three really isn't that affected. Um, but have four, the district four and one um, also provide a report to the full RTM before we vote. I think that's a great idea, Mark. And Frank, in that way, we can be speaking in support of it. For example, if Lois and I were to do it, we would say, or one of us would do it, we would say, otherwise we're gonna have our district one people having to go to four different election sites and that makes no sense so that's the clearest way i think to make people understand that that whole redistricting was problematic for district one and this is the easiest way to blend it out and then we kind of don't even go, go into the length of it we might drop down a person okay uh, makes sense so uh will you want to amend the motion then to add uh, district uh, four and district one as secondary and um district chairs either or, district chairs. or 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 patty or or district chairs yeah okay we could just say the district and the district can decide who they're going to have um represent because it might be most helpful to have somebody who's been on there a long time kind of give their quick short analysis because they've gone through multiple redistricting so thank you thanks everybody thanks susan and all great ideas <laughs> Terrific, terrific. Um, all right, um, so are there any more questions? We're ready to vote. Are there any no votes? Don't see any. Any abstentions? I don't see any. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Next item. Uh, is uh, the library truck grant. We did the town employees contract and it's the truck uh, grant, $18,000. Uh, Frank, you want to take down your screen sharing? You think F&B, Jack? Uh, F&B is the only one responsible for the library grant. Right. Okay, so uh, let me have a motion on that. Sign F&B. And we'll go ahead and assign it to the agenda as well. I'll get two birds with one stone here. Uh, and a second, please. I, is that you, Mark, with a second? Good. Yes, sir. All right. Um, further discussion? Ready to vote? Are there any no votes? I don't see any. Any abstentions? I don't see any. A motion carries unanimously. Uh, no, new Steph, excuse me, Steph. Who, yes, who was the who, who made that motion, sir? I didn't hear it. Um, well, uh, thanks, Joe. Joe I, Joe, I think. And which items did you combine? It was the truck and the blacktop. You combined two. No, we, we, we no the the uh, the truck uh, huh. is truck is, solo. So it was a separate motion. Right, but we decided to add it to the agenda. It's, and uh, F&B was putting, primary. Putting the putting the truck on the agenda and F&B primary. Got it. That's what you combined. Got it. Thank you. All right, uh, Frank, Frank. If you hit that gray screen, you can take down your screen sharing. Down at the bottom. There you go. Thanks. Hi, everybody's live. Okay. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right um new backstop for baker field uh i don't know about park and rec and f and b 
Park and Rec primary, F and B secondary. Uh, is that a motion I heard, Jack? That's a motion if you want it. I'll take it. And, and as well as putting it on the agenda. Yes, sir. Double headers. Um, a second, please. I'll second if set. I, when all the hands go up at once, I, I'm going to go with Peter. I happen to catch, catch, your, <laughs> catch you first, Peter. Um, good. Um, further discussion? We ready to vote? No votes. Are there any no votes? I don't see any. Any abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. Gorham Pond Dam Repair Design, 160,000. Uh, it's uh, there's there's money, so it's F and B plus. Um, I don't know. Is Gorham it's Pond public works? works? It's public, public works. works primary. Public works. Is primary. F and B is secondary. Yeah. And uh, I also make a motion to put that on the agenda, for which Ed would be very thrilled with. Yes, he will. <laughs> Having talked to him a little bit. Um, great. Uh, uh, so I have a motion. Uh, do I have a second, please? Yes, uh, Patty. Good. More discussion? Are we ready to vote? Are there any no votes? I don't see any. Uh, any uh, abstentions? I don't see any. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next is a special appropriation for Tilly Pond drainage. Uh, that's $43,000 uh, because there are two pieces to it. Some of it sort of comes as a donation and some of it comes as a special appropriation. So I think we probably have to vote the full 43000 on this. Um, that's correct. Uh, so... Um, I get a uh, ditto from the, the first public one. works and and F and B. Same yep. Thing. Again, Ralph will be primary, and F and B secondary. Yeah. Great. Um, the Jack's on a roll tonight, Jack. Uh, you you up for a uh, another uh, motion? Sure. <laughs> and put that one on as well to make Ed even happier. There, there we go. He's going to be smiling all the way. All right, so we have a motion. You have a second, please. I got Adelaide on that one. Okay, Mark. Um, further discussion? Are there any no votes? I see none abstentions. I see none. Motion passes unanimously. Zach, may I just make a comment yes. on this motion for you and Jack that there has been, a, I've gotten a lot of feedback from town hall regarding the dollar amount. I'm not disputing it. I understand the mechanics of this, but there's concern that 43 is not the correct number. Could somebody touch base with? Oh, the total number's not? The 43 is not? I, I, I have a conversation with uh, Kate and Jen scheduled for tomorrow because I have to give them stuff. Perfect. So I'll make sure that uh, Ralph and I are on board for it. Um, and I know, Ralph, you're going to be meeting with Ed anyway at his committee meeting Wrong. so we'll make sure that that's all tied up thank you very much hey jack just one yes. question thank you krista when, yes, you're, when you're confirming that jack can you my question was and i think this is is the 43 because it says that there are two or three neighbors that will also be uh involved in this i don't know if it's donations or if they're or not, but uh, so is it we're 43, they're 43, and they're 43? No, or if it, from that, it's uh, 25. My understanding of this. The whole thing is 43 and divided up? Right. And and since it, no. we will be paying for it, we have to have the appropriation for the total amount that we're going to be paying to somebody. Otherwise, they, um, Public Works yeah. would not be authorized to make the full payment. So it's basically we're authorizing 43 and the collection from the other neighbors um, will take place as it takes place based upon the agreement that they have. Got it. Thank and you. And if not, we're still paying for it because it has to be done. And then they write their, their donation to town? 
Um, I'm not sure. That's something that we should check because if it's individual donations under ten thousand dollars, the RTM actually I think that number was raised to twelve thousand five hundred. But if it's under the twelve thousand, the RTM would not necessarily need to um, approve yeah. that. However, if it's cumulative. We, we might need a question from Wayne on what he perceives. But because I, asked, I, uh, I asked about, I asked Kate about it. She seemed to think we'd have to do it, but um, I'm, I'm up for seeing if there's some way we could not have to act. That would be just one less thing for the agenda. Well, no, but it, the question is whether or not the motion is going to authorize an appropriation for, let's say, 43,000. Right. And then within the same motion, accept donations for uh, 21,500 from three people at the same time. So it's one motion. So that's the only thing we have to verify of whether or not that should yeah. be in the resolution. And we'll, we can double check with Wayne and Kate and make sure everybody's happy. Thank you. And as well as Good getting you. the right. There we go. Okay, next item is approved correction to November, the, the minutes, uh, because we disclosed in error uh, how the, who voted for who for the Board of Ethics. If you want, I would just handle this as a correction to minutes and just say, uh, you know, we have to, uh, I want a, a motion to correct it, uh, get the second and just explain that we have to just simply correct the minutes and, and let it be that and, and then go, go for a vote on the RTM floor. That, is if, that okay with everything? I might, yes, if I might make a suggestion, I have had feedback that the comment on the correction of the last minutes, the word oops, works very well. <laughs> thank you and thank you for that. All right, so uh, uh, I'll uh, take a motion to add approving the correction uh, uh, for uh, the moderator to announce uh, uh, in at the start of the RTM meeting. Uh, yes, Lois. I'll, I'll Lois moves it. Yes. We'll have a second, please. Thank you, Jack. Uh, are there any further questions? Okay. Uh, yes, Krista. We currently have a resolution for this motion do you still need a resolution or are you just going to make it in your comments uh make it in the in the approval of minutes in the beginning to okay. say well, I, need a, I need to have you approve the correction so that resolution will be pulled what there is a resolution that wayne wrote that addresses oh, oh. this item okay yeah now I'll, I'll make sure that I can do it that way with him. If not, I'll, I'll offer a resolution. But um, I understood I had that straight with him that I could do it that way. So I, I'll, yeah, that's right. So the resolution would be pulled as it stands now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Seth, can I just interrupt for a minute? Um, Anne, did you rejoin the call? Yes. We're Okay, I just wanted to, it was unidentified. I, I thought you may have rejoined. Okay. And we um, interrupt while we have Ann, so we don't forget to ask the assignment of um, oh, yeah. their district, so we get that out of the way and we don't forget. Ian Laird? Sorry, what? And uh, what uh, assignment? Uh... Committee assignment. Dr. Ian Laird? Ian Reed, yes. uh, Ian Laird on. What what committee? Um, oh, well, he, uh, he, I sent it to Mike earlier. He had his top three choices. First was planning and zoning. Second was public health and safety. And third was public works. Those are his three top choices. So if there's room on planning and zoning, I would put him on that. Well, we seem to have you know, a pretty heavy group on planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. and we've got the same I amount of public health there, as well. Sir. But public but TGS, works. TGS and A could use someone. They only have 10. Yeah. 
Yeah, but District 5 has three people on. Um, oh, they do. You're right. Thank you. It's hard to yeah, see. Yeah, we do. Yeah, thank right. you. We do. So I, I take a look at public, public works. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to give them, I'd like to give them something in the least is top three. So if we could give them public works, that would be great. Okay. And I have a motion to uh, assign Ian Laird to public works. I'll make so that moved. motion. Uh, I'll second it. Got it. I saw a patty on a second. Okay. Uh, are there any further discussion? All right. Uh, are there any no votes? I see none. Any abstentions? I see none. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next is uh, update uh, on uh, the Muni Code degentrification of the town code. Uh, Frank, what a job you've been doing. That's <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, Mike, uh, can you give me the screen again, please? Yep, you're all, you're all set. Coming up. There we go. All right, what uh, we should see on the screen is uh, a package of information uh, concerning uh, this matter. The matter started off last um, June with a resolution. Uh, that's, uh, there, there we go. Uh, but uh, we said that we would contract with the Municode Service Bureau uh, to identify incidences of gender specific pronouns that are in uh, the existing uh, charter and code. And we approved the measure to authorize $3,000 for them to do that. They, they have done that and they presented us back a computerized printout of all the incidences. There are about 400 uh, in uh, about 100 and, uh, 120 different sections of our code. The new sections of the code that have been written, um, with one or two exceptions, have been not have, have not been gender specific. What we're dealing with uh, primarily, 90, 95% is uh, the old style of writing, uh, which uh, we've moved away from. Uh, so that resolution passed, the $3,000 was spent, the report has arrived, and um, uh, TGSNA uh, for the last uh, couple of weeks has, uh, has been reviewing it. Um, and oh, by the way, if, if this passes, if the, if the RTM does decide to make these changes, then uh, Municode will be owed uh, the remaining $1,500. So for a total of $4,500 for this project. Uh, at this point, um, we uh, uh, excuse me, in the, in the package you'll see a, uh, you know, what is gender neutrification? There's a nice article in Wikipedia, and this is an extract from that Wikipedia article in case anybody asks us what we are doing and, and why. Uh, I've also got a, a summary up here of, of the actions that have been taking place, which I'm, points that I'm talking to. There are a couple of pages here of um, frequently asked questions. Uh, we covered some of these uh, at, when this when we were discussing this in June. Other well, questions are um, uh, are we, you know uh, uh, it, will we change selectmen and chairman and, and, uh, and what is written down here is that selectmen is firmly embedded in some of the state regulation state correspondence and a current preference of our selectmen uh, don't want to go through a change and so. Well, we short, short circuited that, and so we don't have changes for selectmen or, or chairman. People can refer to themselves as chair if they will. Um, ha has town council review other there other Q and A who frequently asked questions? Has town council reviewed this? In fact, yes. Wayne submitted his uh, uh, suggestions to the 400 changes last week, <laughs> and we were very glad to see that he was. was uh, uh, wanted to play in the thing. Other question is, are we changing anything other than gender? If we find errors or omissions or out-of-date text, 
are we going after that? We thought we might, we thought we might do it, and then we realized that what we're seeing in a section of the code, uh, a particular paragraph, which is brought to our attention or change, we're not looking at the whole perspective of the such code. And so it's not really, um, it wouldn't really be right for us to go modernizing the language that wasn't changed. So we're stick, stick to our charter of only making gender changes. And where there are exceptions, there's a page here, a short page, which I'm flashing on there, of certain, certain changes that were very obvious needed to be made. Uh, and so where we have suggesting them, we were, we're identifying well, where they're to be found. I think there's a whole bunch of commas. We put in commas, we've got a list of where the commas went in. So here's an example, there's 50 pages of this uh, material. I, 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 I am not going to read the whole 50 pages, but I will give you an example. The very first one, uh, it talks about the registrar of voters and the electors. It says uh, the person, uh, the elector, uh, should uh, put down his name. And so you see here, the his is in yellow and been crossed out like with redlining. And then the electors is the words that are be sept, uh, substituted. Further down, um, where we talk about um, people who hold office, you hold office until his successor is appointed. Well, it's a, now it's a successor. One more good one down in the town clerk section. It says that the um, top of this page here, keep a record, town clerk should keep a record of his receipts in his office in book form. Well, that's now the town clerk's office. Easy peasy. Um, they, they didn't become easy. Down in sec, down uh, the worst section, the most challenging section was in the police retirement system. And I have jumped down to page 40 because I know that's where it is. Uh, if a member of the police department or his widow, uh, the legal guardian, I called Chief Anderson um, last week to say, uh, uh, Dan, how many women are serving on the force at the moment? And he gave me the number. I think it's four, I think it's 14. I said, are any of them close to retirement age at, or retirement and years of service? And he said, yeah, one, one has retired already and there are uh, two more who will uh, achieve their seniority soon. And I uh, he, and uh, he said, if you can get this thing changed uh, by the time they retire, it will be nice. Because you've got the, all sorts of references. A member of the police department or his widow or the legal guardian, and then the, they go down here, the children. So the, the word surviving spouse uh, comes into play rather than widow and all that. So this is the nature of the uh, nature of the uh, changes that, that we come up with. Uh, TGSNA has, has thoroughly looked over this. In other words, we've reached a stopping point. Um, everybody took a section of it and then came around. We consolidated the remarks and everybody reviewed it one more time. And then everybody else, everybody took a different section from that, what they read before. And then we got Wayne's comments in. So the document that we've got now, uh, you will see in sort of the summary, summary report up the top here. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I will say that on Thursday, February 10th, uh, 2022, TGSNA committee with six of 10 members present voted unanimously to recommend that the Rules Committee proceed with a public hearing on this matter, leading to consideration by the RTM no less than 60 days following the public hearing. So that uh, I would be pleased to answer questions. Uh, but the point is we are not uh, uh, able to put this on the RTM agenda right away because changes to the charter require a public hearing and public uh, newspaper notice and all that procedure. And then after you have a public hearing, uh, our, our charter says uh, you have a 60 day period uh, cooling off period or a think about it period between the public hearing and then the earliest possible RTM meeting would uh, be 60 days later. So uh, the recommendation from TGSNA, as you can see on the uh, memo here, is that Rules Committee accept our report and uh, recommend that a public hearing be held. So you're moving that, Frank? Uh, 
Yes, that will allow discussion to take place. Uh, no, thank I'm you. Very the Rules Committee. Yeah, so I, I have a motion, and then can I have a second? Could I? Uh, I see Mike hand up. So we have a motion, a second. Uh, discussion, please. Uh, Who yes. Was, who's that second, sir? Uh, Mike Wheeler. I thought that was the primary. No. I mean, that, he moved it. No, primary, the, the motion was made by Frank Ken. Frank, got it. My, my comment isn't on the, um, the authorization of a public hearing to move this forward. My comment is, um, I, I'd like to know how, many, how often the word chairman is used, um, because on the floor of the RTM, I'm going to recommend that we change chairman to chair i agree fine i try to avoid that but i'll i'll put a big sign in front of myself there just to remind me um okay i'm not going to debate selectmen at this time but changing chairman to chair is an easy chair uh switch that's being done throughout corporate america yeah. Well, certainly from my standpoint, introducing people, I'll use the word chair. All right. Well, um, I, don't, I, um, uh, I don't want to influence the discussion. I, uh, I, in the memo, I called attention to the very last page, uh, page 51, uh, where we have a somewhat humorous so it was manhole covers. And the computer picked up manhole as, a, as an endangered thing. And so you'll see over there, it becomes maintenance holes. I, and and I, I'd love to have the public comment on that. Uh, I, I would also, with the, the business of chair, I don't know whether we want to vote on whether it should be chair or selectman or whatever. And so let the public, let the public talk, because we do have 60 days uh, and, and probably a rules committee or two in between the conclusion of the public hearing and that, so I'm okay with chair person, but it's uh, but if it's going to start a hassle, I'd rather not have the hassle and get corrected what we can get corrected rather than get into one of these loop loop de loop things or people you know worrying about yeah. it. I, it, it, it and the and the, the manhole cover issue is emblematic of that. If people want to make it, let me keep them manholes, that's fine with me. I, I think there's a distinct difference between manhole cover, which is somewhat humorous. And, um, <laughs> that depends yeah. on the evening. <laughs> so, um, it's also an inanimate object. <laughs> right. I, I actually believe that if we're going in to fix this, th let's fix it right the first time, as opposed to worrying about bringing it back. So I'll make my comment at public hearing, and I will still make my motion on the floor of the RTM. I feel that strongly about it. Well, I think all the other stuff I, that you've I, done I, is I great. Way, no matter how all this comes out, I really want to not have what when I'm hoping that when this comes before the RTM, we don't have motions and amendments and the thing because we'll be there all night. So I do want Jack to get it sorted out tonight or public hearing or rules committee before the rtm i'm open to all these types of, of ways of getting uh, i as you might imagine i am glad i am happy to get it out of tgs and and get it out on the playing field so because we've done our work and uh, we've made our report and we've made our recommendations and and i also see that you signed off as chair frank not chairman <laughs> so <laughs> So, my friends, uh, are we ready to vote? I sense we are ready to vote. Question. Are, uh, Lois? Are, are we, can we make the change now or do we have to wait until later on? It's, is the chair, is that, is this particular, I, I would think that the, the use of the terms chairman are in the existing document there somewhere, chairman or mm -hmm. Whatever, does it address it anywhere, Frank? Already? I'm sorry? Frank, does the uh, the, the word uh, chairman, 
uh, uh, use of the word chair, is that, does that get addressed anywhere already in the document? Uh, 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 when, we, when we sent instructions to Municode, we said, uh, leave selectmen out and leave chairman out, so we don't have them coded. However, I know that there are just about a dozen, ent a dozen things, and we can certainly change them. But I change them at re uh, uh, reluctantly if it's going to start a hassle. And I just, you know, we've got so many things to change. There are 400 changes in there, and some of them way overdue. Uh, and uh, some of them are very insulting to, uh, to our colleagues. Uh, and I just want to get the damn thing fixed. So I, I'm perfectly happy to get the thing fixed and leave chairman alone. Oh, I object. I'm perfectly happy for you to change chairman now. Yeah. And therefore, we don't have to raise the issue later. Right. And that way, it'll slide through very simply, Frank. Okay, look, look, you all vote on it. And if you decide that the chairman ought to be changed to ch chair, uh, within tomorrow afternoon, I'll have that changed and go now. I don't feel that I'm overstepping what TGSNA said or overstep anybody because after all, we're putting out a document for the public to review. So if I goof up the manhole cover thing, the public can correct me or correct <laughs> us. So it's okay. Okay. I, so, so, I, so Seth, I, if I you don't, don't mind, I, yeah, so, uh, do you why don't I make a motion now? Yeah, and I'll second, it. I'll second it. Also include. If, if, if we all vote to make the change, I'll make the change. So, okay. so let's, I'll put the motion forward that we, in this document that's being presented for the public hearing, that the word chairman be changed to chair. Okay. I'll second that. Jack. Well, I, have a, second. I have a second, I think. So, oh, Frank wanted a second. So, okay, I'll give uh, Frank a second. All right. Um, ready to vote? Okay. Um, are there no votes? <laughs> Frank, all right, Frank. We had a no, no from, no from Frank. You know what this does, Frank? I have to go to a roll call. No, you don't. We know who the no vote is. Yeah, but I have. Well, I guess I just have to identify. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right look, okay. I, I, I'd like to change my vote. Fine. So you have a unanimous. <laughs> It's a pressure. <laughs> well, that Please. way, you see, Frank, Frank I, I owe you a drink. get out of the meeting alive. Yeah. Anyway. The moderator, the moderator. Right. According to uh, the there, the abstentions, vote. please. I, I see no no votes. Abstentions, please. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Now, uh, I'll just give you a, ble a brief report on Appendix B. It's a, it's a work in process. Uh, it's not ready yet, but uh, we have the finest minds working on it. Yes, Mark. I think we had a motion on the floor to recommend the previous item before it was modified for the chairman chair flip flop to present that item. Let's see. Uh, where were we going to present it? Was it to present it to the public? What, no, what are we going to do? To, to, to uh, send it uh, public for hearing. public hearing. We didn't vote to recommend it. We never got to. We got to the, the motion amending it. We never voted to recommend it. To yeah, well, to well, I thought they dropped the original motion and offered a new motion to an amended motion, but that's okay. If it does everybody but was it all rolled together in one? Yeah. So, so we amended it yes. and we recommended it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Got it. Um, I will just report to you on Appendix B that it's a work in process and uh, we'll be uh coming before us uh at a later date but i want to let you know it's it's on the table uh, we have the finest minds working on it um next thing is um the uh uh i spoke with jack and uh we thought it would be a good idea it's never been done before but it, it's a good idea to have uh, a report come out from one of our uh, own committees to talk about what the, the situation is with the town finances after the first six months. And Jack, uh, I'll recognize you to talk about that. Well, there's going to be a slight modification. What, because the reports are available, um, on 
on February, what I'd like to do is start the meeting since we're in budget session with reporting on the first seven months of the Board of Selectmen, um, Board of Ed, and um, the um, debt, um, as well as have a slight document um, that will say the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Ed have approved their budgets. Here's the starting point. So it's comparing what they requested last year versus what they are requesting this year with the connotation and with the note that things will be changed um, in capital and other places as deliberations go. I'm working with um, Rich Rudel on the commentary and the Board of Ed documents. I'm working with Jen on the Board of and Kate on the Board of Selectmen. Um, one of the problems that are going on is that there's several of these are out there and we want to make sure it's all the same. So the report that we're going to say is purely here's what the boards have requested. Here's what they requested last year and a brief explanation of when they voted on it, when it's being handed off to the Board of Finance, what the Board of Finance will be doing, when they will vote on it, and when the RTM will vote on it, at least for the new budget. So, um, and also a statement that the grand list increased significantly, which it did by approximately 1.9%. So um, those are, it comes down to maybe four or five slides, and I'm working on those slides with Jen, um, because we're just gonna make it very short and simple um, and not take any steam away or any thunder away from either the superintendent explaining their budget on March 1st or the um, first selectman explaining her budget on um, March 1st to the Board of Finance. So very high level going through and having a sign off from each of the um, various groups. Uh, Duke gave me permission to work directly with uh, Rich Rudel on this. Usually I would go through Duke and then over to them. But in this case, we're uh, working directly to expedite this. So, yeah, quick question. Are you, so you're just going to, I actually think this is a great idea. So thank you. Uh, because you're, you know, sometimes all of a sudden it's the final budget meeting in May and we're voting on it. And there's a lot of people that have read a lot and done a lot and then there's others that just haven't and that's that you know for one reason or another so this is going to inform people in advance so i think that where it was they'll still be my question is this is just a presentation and you're not taking q a is that correct i would not want to take q a um there's a lot of work to be done to them can you make that statement when you say that this is just a presentation i'm not taking q a but this is just so people are absolutely people positively are capable of doing that right. i don't want to discuss the and no doubt no doubt that jack could shut that down yeah, jack. yeah, yeah that, uh, I, I will be mentioning if you don't mind two things like number one there was a major change because of gas b84 to our financial statements that closed june 30th that did some changing to the student activity fund. In addition, um, as Adele well knows, um, Park and Rec is blowing the revenue out of the water again, and similar to the a resolution that we had to make last June to increase expenses, um, we're gonna do that again this year, but they are changing the accounting for this to a special revenue fund, and I'm just gonna say they're doing this when we do our budget presentation, we will explain it. When I talk about the grand list, I'm gonna say it went up and that will generate additional income, but there's also some expenses that are associated with that grand list. Again, that will be discussed during the budget. Jack, and and leave it at that. Jack, when you do your presentation- Okay, can I- Wait, wait, Teresa, you had a question? Yeah, yeah I was gonna say, when you do your presentation, can you also just let RTM members know when the Board of Finance public hearing is, because then they can either participate or at the very least watch it. I will I will add that into the slide. I have no problem with that. Yes, good good point. Okay, can I have a motion to have Jack make this presentation? Uh, Teresa, yes, a second. Mike again, a great Mike. Okay, 
Um, are we ready to vote? Are there any uh, no votes, please? Uh, any uh, abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. I see none. Um, next is just simply, I'll, I'll do a reminder on the Blight Review Board. I don't need a vote on this, but I want to just let you know. Uh, I'm going to get on the horn and call the district heads and see what, you know, see if we can get some action here. Uh, there have got to be some talented people out there that could do this. And uh, I do Seth, I would just re remind you when you do have those calls that to remind people that the, the meetings are in person and it's there's no way to do them hybrid. So it, people have to be comfortable with that and have to and be available. Just, and at five o'clock on Tuesdays. It's five o'clock on Wednesdays. On Wednesday. Geez, just making it easy on us here. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, I also put... Uh, down here, possible uh, invitations uh, to people to speak, but this uh, agenda has grown to the point where I, I, unless somebody really wanted to do this, I would just push this off. I would I, agree, sir. I see no one dying to hear this, so I'm going to take that out. Great. Great. Okay, uh, let's um, set uh, the agenda for February 28th. Uh, I sent out a draft for you. I always think it's easier if there's a draft there. I, I'm just going to check it and make sure I didn't leave anything out. Uh, we've got the approve uh, the corrections right. As you can see, I'm doing that early. Then uh, need for the blight, of just an announcement. And then uh, the uh, presentation, the six months from Jack. Then we've got uh, the contract, approve and not reject. Adjustment of existing RTM district boundaries, the library truck, new backup for Baker, uh, Gorham's Pond, and a special appropriation for the Tilly Cron drainage study. I'm just double checking. I don't think I left anything out. Anybody see me leave anything out there? Okay. Uh, can I have a motion then to uh, set the uh, agenda? Uh, yes, Mark. Uh, I, I make that motion. To okay, set the and Jack is a second. A uh, second I questions? I see none. They're uh, ready to vote. Uh, no votes, please. I don't see any uh, abstentions. I don't see any. Motion passes unanimously. Um, if I might raise one other thing, I'm just going to raise this to Mike and to you, Seth. Yeah. It's my it's my understanding, based upon an interesting conversation, that, you know, we've been sort of spoiled by having Kate at many of our meetings yeah. um, for the RTM. But it's my understanding she will not be available for the um, budget meeting. meeting. Right. Right. I just want to make sure everybody was aware of that. Yeah, wow. we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll let Cecil know, and so he can focus on the next meeting. Anything that he may have questions on, so that he's ready in May. Great, super. Thank you. Yeah, okay. thanks. Thanks for bringing it up. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, report from the Rules Technology Committee. Lois Schneider, Chair. Uh, first, I'd like to thank. Um, <laughs> sure. um, <laughs> whoever said anyway. Um, <laughs> Mike and Mark for all the hard work because we've been really busy. Um, the I'll just give you a quick results. We did a, a survey. The purpose of the survey was understand if we ever needed to use um, the cable channel 79 for anything. We needed to know who could have access to it, and the results were. Um, we got 80, 82 percent of the of the RTM responded. Um, 18 percent have no cable. 27 percent have cable, but the access is not in the room where they do their the RTM meetings. And 55 percent have have access to the, the to their cable in the room that they do the RTM meetings. So that's just information to have um, for future if we have to do any planning on that kind of thing. 
Um, no judgment there. The other thing that um, we have been working very hard on is the ARPA funds, and ARPA stands for American Rescue Plan Act. Um, my understanding is that the town has 6.4 million, I think I have the right number, available to use for um, town purposes, um, having to do with, I won't go into the details because I'd probably get it wrong, but um, that there's a committee that's put together that John Zagratsky and Kate Bush had to allocate or decide what money should go where. Um, the proposal will come to the full RTM, not yet. Um, there's a plan Jack very kindly outlined for me <coughs> what we're trying to do, and it has to do with moving what money, take money that would go into the budget or not into the budget or capital expenditure and things like that. So I'm not going near that. But the reason what this is all about is we cannot do a hybrid meeting in, in, in the town hall auditorium. There's feedback and therefore meetings have to be either virtual or in person at this point in time. Um, so what, we're, what we have suggested is that we're proposing that they, the town invest in some equipment so that we can do um, hybrid meetings. It doesn't mean we will, it, it, because there's issues about what, how we're allowed to vote and things like that. But what started out as how can we do hybrid moved on to can we upgrade the technology in the town hall auditorium um, to be able to benefit meetings in you know meetings or shows or whatever the use of the the town hall auditorium. So that was the basis of the proposal. The other piece that we included in that is that to have some portable kind of um, equipment that we can do committee meetings on a hybrid basis and um, and have you know equipment that can be used with a PC to have hybrid meetings so that hybrid meeting is people are present in the in person and some people are virtual and combine that that people can see each other and hear each other so that's what we've been working on trying to figure out um, with Kate's support we put together a proposal that requesting the ability to do the hybrid, the equipment for hybrid meetings in the town hall auditorium and the portable um, meeting rooms. And then an incremental addendum because we didn't, to add the new projector and enhance the, the ability to do presentations in the auditorium. That does not directly affect the RTM need, but we put that all in one proposal. Kate has accepted the proposal so the purpose of the proposal, which is, I don't know that anyone had time to read it, but we're happy you know, to answer any questions when you do or if you do. Um, the proposal goes to Kate that she's gonna put in front with you. So the goal for tonight is for the rules committee to endorse the proposal if you all agree with it. The, um, this does not need to go before the RTM now because the RTM will vote on all the ARPA um, allocations. So if this makes it through the process of, of the town process, then it will eventually be part of the ARPA funding request for the town. Um, the other comment I'd like to make is that the funding request is, is, a, is a reasonable estimate that when, if it's approved and if it's approved through the, RT, through the RTM, that the town, Kate will have to manage or will have the ability to manage the projects and um, depending on the the hope is that there'll be some flexibility on how money gets allocated. So if we're if we've estimated too high and we have too much money, that money will go back to another project. Or if we're missing a couple of thousand dollars because we decided to do because the town decided to do something different, that we can get the money from somewhere else. So their their best estimates at this point in time is where those numbers came from. So is there are there any questions? Is there a motion, if I, Lois? If I might, not a question, but just for information purposes. Um, a member of f and was asked to be on the ARPA committee. And so everyone should know that Martha Banks represents the RTM and f and on that ARPA committee. Um, I, I would also just briefly say that they are attempting to have anything that would pay for any of the requested capital in this budget be presented to the Board of Finance prior to their vote? If not, and if it's a, um, decided to use it subsequent to their vote April 8th, 
then what we will have to do is vote on those ARPA funding uh, for those capital items prior to us voting on the budget and then um, if passed, remove those items that were included in the budget out of the budget, changing the mill rate. So that's just some of the dynamics of why people are moving forward on this. Um, we don't have the full 6.4 million yet. We have over 3 million currently. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion. Uh, oh. You have a motion, please? Oh, I'd like to make a motion to endorse the proposal for the use of ARPA funds um, in, to enhance the technology in the um, town hall auditorium and, and town hall rooms. Okay, I'll can second. I come back? Second. I, have, uh, I see Teresa seconding. Uh, further discussion? Adele, did you have a question? No, I didn't have a oh, question, yeah. Lois. I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think the upgrades in, in the auditorium are just so overdue and what a fine job you guys did and I couldn't be more pleased and we should all listen to the ARPA meeting tomorrow morning at 9.30 as they work their way through all this stuff. But I do think this is worthy. We're not the only, I sent, I remember a while back I sent you some information on I down in Virginia and I, and I listened to, I mean, I pay attention to what they're doing there in Charlottesville and they're going through the same thing and they've done the same thing with their their auditorium and their you know their downtown and blah 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 everybody's dealing with these same issues and this is a fine resolution and I really appreciate it well everybody's if, working if I, that's it if I, if I might add one of the things that really excites me is that now when you're having, let's say, the Department of Transportation coming and having a hearing on what we're doing at one of the train stations, this technology would allow for a hybrid meeting so that people could participate in that. Um, it also allows for training of town hall staff. So the value to it while we're first bringing it up as the RTM is unbelievably beneficial to the town for years to come um, that I think is just outstanding work done by Lois and the uh, Mark and Mike. Uh, just great work on that. Thank you. It's terrific. It's terrific. Wonderful. Um, now, um, I'd like to add one thing that um, we have Kate's support and that's really wonderful. So, Yes, at the OPC meeting, uh, I said, by the way, the RTM during the current budget cycle is looking for money. And that was that almost brought the house down there. And uh, so I said, uh, and I understand that we're petitioning Kate for money. And and she she just calmly sat there and said, give me a number. <laughs> I said, I will pass that on to Mr. Schneider. She will uh, he'll be in touch at any yeah. rate. Uh, great. Um, so right ahead, before the uh, we knew it was going to offer um, at the last board of selectmen meeting when they went to executive session, I was uh, discussing with uh, budget with uh, Mr. Palin and um, Ed and um, several other members were there, and I said that we're going to be going for funds, and um, if offer isn't there, we're going for the board of finance contingency to fund this, and then added that the Board of Finance would be very foolish not to approve the RTM um, request um, just about the time that we're looking at their budget. <laughs> and Jim laughed? Um, Jim didn't laugh as much as everybody else did. <laughs> uh, all right, um, great. Uh, so uh, we're ready to vote. Are there any no votes? Uh, any abstentions? I see none. Motion passes unanimously. Um, other business? I see no one rushing to the mic. Uh, <laughs> so I'll assume there's no other business. Uh, I'll take a uh, motion to adjourn. Second, please.
Uh, I've I got Patty and Joe Joe Michelli seconding. Um, no votes. Abstentions. Have a great evening. Or what's Happy left? Of it. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye.